first thing to remember is this is only aimed at rich people. It's clearly mostly being used for real estate. That wasn't the stated intent. A Trump-era tax shelter is generating billions of dollars worth of tax breaks, often in pursuit of building luxury high-rises, high-end hotels, and swank office spaces. We have an axe-throwing place called Unofficial Logging, and we have a place called Urban Putt, which has these really amazing uh, miniature golf full-service bar and restaurant. So it's, a, it's an axe-throwing place? Yep. I just want to get all that. So Buena Vista is going to have a, a tasting room here. Tasting room, uh, they have uh, also chocolatier, and then at night they'll serve uh, caviar with the red wine. The problem is that these tax breaks were supposed to revive the most economically distressed areas, so-called opportunity zones. I'm standing in front of a building in downtown Napa, California, that was remodeled thanks to a tax shelter for the wealthiest Americans. It's now an anthropology. These tax breaks have fallen short in creating those opportunities for left-behind communities. Places like Baltimore or Oakland or, or Woodland or smaller communities that are underserved were not receiving those types of investments because there is no accountability to those investors or developers. So how come the billions in incentives are going to wealthy communities like Napa or downtown San Jose's tech hubs instead of where it's most needed? They bought this parking lot for $35 million, and they're planning a 900,000 square foot office high rise here. Planning like 40,000 square feet of retail here. We're also building a 5,000 square foot rooftop bar, which will be the largest rooftop bar in Silicon Valley. It's no secret that historic wealth inequality in California is pushing lower and middle income families into economic despair. Part of the Trump tax cut package of 2017 was supposed to help fix that. The so-called Opportunity Zone program would encourage investors to put their money into communities that badly needed it. So the way that Opportunity Zones work is you, you sell an asset, have a profit, called a capital gains. Ordinarily, you'd have to pay taxes on that. But if you put it in an Opportunity Zone, you get to defer, and in some cases, reduce the taxes you owe on that. This can cut the tax bill of investors by as much as 15% when it does come due. And if they keep their money in the Opportunity Zone project for a decade, they don't pay any taxes at all on the potentially large profits they make off that investment. Sounds good for both sides, right? But of course, there was a problem. The way the law was written and implemented by the Treasury, 56% of all the census tracts in America were eligible to be designated as Opportunity Zones. The final regulations were astoundingly permissive, and some of the nation's wealthiest places qualified. Like part of downtown San Jose in the heart of Silicon Valley, next door to Google's future mega campus. So do you do you have a sense of what it'll cost to rent an uh, apartment in, in these buildings? So a thousand square foot, two bedroom would be $4,250 a month. So who's the market for the, the housing? It's tech workers. It's tech workers, okay. It's tech workers. A local developer showed us around building projects that are getting tax breaks from this Opportunity Zone. So in terms of what the program was designed for, because that's, you know, as you know, a matter of dispute, um, does it, does it, there was a lot of talk about left behind communities. This feels to you like a left behind community? It feels to me like a left behind community. The way I like to phrase it is it's designed to create positive social and economic benefits for certain areas. And really that's how I see it and really what we're doing. This thing was not set up to really encourage investment in very poor communities that would lift the fortunes of people who live there. Can you use it for good purposes? Absolutely. Is there any requirement that you do that? No. Well, where do you think most of the money's gonna go? One place the money didn't go, the city of Woodland, 25 minutes outside of Sacramento. This area has been neglected for many, many years. We need to have further housing. Uh, we need to find ways to mitigate homelessness. Um, we need to find ways to help support our farm workers and find um, economic opportunities to develop here in Woodland. Woodland could be a ripe canvas for development as home buyers and renters move in in search of a cheaper alternative to Sacramento or Davis. But it hasn't seen a penny of the Opportunity Zone investment it's seeking for revitalization. Well, I would hope that they were maybe committed to uh, look at communities that were underserved. Unfortunately, investors are looking for a greater return on their money, and Woodland has not seen that sort of development. 
an opportunity zone that has seen that development, the heart of California wine country, downtown Napa. How much did you say the, the whole rehabilitation cost? I mean, it was, it was obviously multi-millions. This area was depressed, a retail was empty. Uh, it was needing a boost. We do have one of the wealthiest uh, in, in the world of the country, and we have some of the poorest. The developer of this beautifully renovated century-old Gordon building told me that the program was all about risk. You know, as you guys know, OZ, Opportunity Zones, are not credits. They're incentives for investors to take risk. This building, because of the, the damages from earthquake, the general dis construction costs, and the market, we couldn't make it work unless we had that incentive. The building now includes a conspicuously indulgent wine tasting room, office space upstairs, and that anthropology. So having these two stores here, how's that helping the community, helping underserved people in the community? Well, I mean, anytime you can bring in uh, retail services, you know, I think people benefit from it. So I think anthropology is one of those brands that almost everybody likes. I mean, it has something for everybody. Still, economically distressed is hardly what comes to mind when strolling through downtown Napa. There's been little transparency for the Opportunity Zone program. The tax breaks handed out are not reported publicly. It's not just California. There are 8,764 census tracts designated as Opportunity Zones nationwide. A UC Berkeley analysis found nearly half the cash invested went to the richest 1% of those zones, places that hardly fit the definition of distressed. They sort of set the lines based on the 10 and said, hey, that was what it was, good, bad, or ugly, that's what it was, and we're, we're not going to be influenced now by lobbyists or politicians or whatever. Those were where they were. I didn't have anything to do with it. There's a very anti-billionaire you know, billionaire thing going on in America. The money has to come from somewhere. And if who has money, people that have money have money. We're just looking to, to really um, build here and develop um, good quality economic opportunities with good stores. They're just doing what the law allows them to do. You can't blame them. Those who've soured on the tax break say they've seen enough to conclude it's doing little to bring the country closer to the goal of alleviating poverty. But it is, they say, helping a lot of wealthy investors and developers of luxury properties. Hey there, thanks for watching this episode of The United States of California. You can learn more by reading the full story at latimes.com and follow our series on the impact of California's agenda on the rest of the country.